Welcome back. It's Ari, and I'm here with my partner, Eric, again to discuss some of the details on how iGrow induction lighting has forged the way in advancing and proving our agricultural light technologies. About a year and a half ago, we said, okay, we're ready. Bring iGrow to market. But we still continue to hear from growers who have not used iGrow, are you sure it will grow plants? That is when we decided to get together with leading plant lighting scientists with the USDA and major agricultural universities to get our final stamp of approval. So Eric, after years of working with the leading agricultural lighting experts, what surprised you the most during this process? Well, Ari, I'd have to say the general obscurity of induction lighting. We were fortunate to have developed great relationships with the USDA and a number of major ag universities as they did grow trials on sure to grow So it was just natural to call our friends at these institutions to let them know what we were up to with iGrow. And when I spoke to them about our technology, it was truly shocking that they had no experience whatsoever with induction lighting, and most had never even seen one. After brief discussions, we were immediately making appointments to visit and develop testing protocols and validation strategies. I know we've been working with top-level USDA researchers. Can you give everyone a brief overview of who we are working with and the type of data they're evaluating? Sure. We are working with two of the most experienced plant lighting experts at the USDA. The first is Dr. Jonathan Franz, who works out of the University of Toledo. Dr. Franz worked extensively with our unique agricultural blends and their effects on plant growth. We had Jonathan work with a few different formula variations and wanted him and his grad students to find the phosphor blends that would perform best on vegging plants. And we were really happy with their results. We've included Dr. Franz's studies on our website. The second USDA expert we've been working with is Dr. David Fleischer, who is at the USDA facility in Beltsville, Maryland, which, by the way, is the largest agricultural research facility in the world. Dr. Fleischer has done extensive studies with our patent-pending lamps on many different vegetable and fruit crops, some veg and some bloom, and is still working on new trials as we provide him with advanced formulations. Eric, why do you think that Dr. Fleischer and his students have been so excited to work with iGrow? It's been really rewarding working with Dave and his grad students. Dr. Fleischer immediately saw the potential of induction lighting for plant growth and loved the opportunity to be one of the first researchers in the world to start trials with it. People in ag research know that LED has not performed well in trials and is still many years away from being a legitimate option. Dr. Fleischer was able to determine very early on that Agra was the real deal. Dave and his grad students have concentrated on known plant biology, and by collaborating with his colleague, Dr. Jerry Dieter, who's just down the street at the University of Maryland, they have proven that our iGrow bloom lamp actually mirrors the sun's color and intensity, and as Dr. Dieter has said, actually has a better photosynthetic impact on plants than the sun. I think it's fair to say that Dr. Fleischer, Dr. Dieter, and all the grad students involved have had a blast working with iGrow and being part of the cutting edge of plant growth technology. That's a great answer, Eric. My next question is, are we still doing research and testing with the Ohio Agricultural Research and Development Center at the Ohio State University? And if so, who are we working with and what type of data are they seeing using our iGrow induction lights? Yes, we are, and we couldn't be happier working with Dr. Robert Hansen and Dr. Peter Ling. Dr. Hansen has years of experience in plant growth research, and Dr. Ling is a world-renowned lighting expert who is currently working on some of the most advanced plant lighting projects being conducted for NASA. Again, we knew Robert and Peter from studies they had done with sure to grow and like everyone else we approached, they were immediately intrigued and excited to work with induction. The first study we did with them was pretty basic. Coincidentally, they had just performed a study with lettuce using LED lights versus HPS. And after the trials and their evaluation, they gave the LED lights the thumbs down. While there were some energy savings using LEDs, they found more significantly that the LED lights worked poorly with the plant biology of the various lettuce varieties tested, which led to poor yields, bland colors, and most importantly, a very bitter taste. So what we did was replicate that exact study replacing LED with iGrow versus HPS. The results were very encouraging as we met or exceeded the yields of HPS, and notably, the lettuces under iGrow were very clearly more vibrant and attractive and generally tasted better. 
We are now on to more evaluations at OARDC and at Ohio State's main campus in Columbus. Because in very in-depth analyses of the lettuce leaves, Dr. Hansen and his researchers have discovered that the lettuce grown under eye grow actually had more anthocyanin, an important antioxidant. And this information and data is now being shared with OSU researchers who are studying the effects of antioxidants on human health. It's pretty awesome to continue to discover the amazing potential of our technology. Thanks, Eric. My last question is associated with the project we did at the Chef's Garden in Huron, Ohio. Can you describe to everyone how the Jones family worked hand in hand with us to validate and make this the largest commercial greenhouse induction lighting install in the world with over 800 iGrow fixtures. Well, Ari, the Jones family was extraordinarily generous in allowing us to use their three-acre greenhouse. This enabled us to properly configure the light layouts and specifications for using iGrow as a supplemental lighting source in a commercial greenhouse. Clearly, they were sold on the concept of using induction technology and allowed us mostly you actually, to spend hundreds of hours at their facility to determine what were the most effective light patterns and heights for iGrow. They actually planted 21 different varieties of their lettuces to help transform our theory of using iGrow for greenhouse supplemental lighting into a viable and effective reality. The data showed that we not only grew the crop in a shorter period of time, but with better color and taste. Their own independent testing showed 13 to 100% better growth and increased weight, which to a commercial grower means more turns, less cost, and bigger profits. So in other words, we hit the trifecta. We have a great recap on our website with plenty of pictures and also a video showing how we actually developed a light mover to work with our greenhouse control system to create light on demand during the daylight growth period. It's pretty awesome. Thanks, Eric. And thanks to everyone watching this video. For more information, or if you have any questions, please contact us at iGrowLights.com. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at iGrowLights. Keep passing these videos on.